The Ferense Television Company was founded in 1929 by the man who invented television, Scottish inventor John Logie Baird. During the 1930s, Baird worked with a consortium of German companies to develop the new technology. By 1939, Ferense was owned solely by the Robert Bosch Corporation, a German manufacturer of spark plugs. Ferense abandoned John Logie Baird's mechanical system of scanning images in favor of the all-electronic iconoscope scanning system. Ferense broadcast live the 1936 Olympics in Berlin. For decades, Ferense set the standard for television image quality all over the world. In the 1950s, Ferense adopted the super iconoscope camera with the first turret lenses. In the 1960s, Ferense developed color television cameras, culminating with the introduction in 1971 of the KCU-40 color camera, which used three 30mm Plumicon pickup tubes. Ferense provided most of the cameras at the 1972 Olympics in Munich. It was at this time that Ferense tried to break into the American market, which was dominated by RCA. The Dutch company Philips was enjoying success selling its collar cameras under the brand name Norelco, the same Norelco that makes electric razors. In 1971, Ferense USA set up offices at the Robert Bosch Corporation in Broadview, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. The goal was to sell as many collar cameras as possible. My name is Tom Barker. In July 1972, Rupert Goodspeed, general manager of Ferense USA, asked me to join the company as National Systems Administrator. Rupert had already had a successful career in television at CBS, winning an Emmy Award for Best Electronic Work on the Bell Telephone Hour. I had been working with Rupert's wife, Betsy Goodspeed, directing her daily show on WTTV Channel 4 in Bloomington, Indiana. Besides directing, I was also on the remote production crew. Rupert decided I had the right combination of experience and enthusiasm and offered me the job. He was anxious enough to hire me that he personally helped me move my belongings to Chicago. It was while I was filming this that Rupert asked me if I was moving or making a movie. The Midwest sales office in Broadview was staffed by Rupert, his secretary, Tony Jolliker, me, and the Midwest sales rep. Vince Lyons. Vince was always enthusiastic about demonstrating the cameras. Another secretary, Annalise Messing, would help at times. Being German, the Bosch company knew how to throw a Christmas party. The president of Bosch USA, Henry Schirmer, usually sat at the Ferense table at these events. I guess he thought we were more entertaining. In 1972, the Ferense cameras were being hailed as the best in the world by the industry and Hollywood was taking notice. Years before High Definition HD, it was only a dream that one could create an electronic camera to rival the quality of 35mm film. The Ferense KCU-40 was cutting-edge technology, and the industry wanted to see how the camera looked when compared to film. We spent a week at Kodak Laboratories in Rochester, New York to conduct tests. An array of cameras was mounted on a special pan head. Besides the Ferense KCU-40, there were two 35mm Aeroflexes and a 16mm Aeroflex. Each scene was directed using actors in a variety of situations that would illustrate certain technical issues. The Ferense camera image was recorded on 2-inch tape. That image would be compared to the film images from the three film cameras. This was my first opportunity to work with Peter Preyer, the television engineer from the Ferense factory in Darmstadt, Germany. Peter provided the technical know-how to keep the cameras working and he worked with the American technicians to learn the same. Peter worked out of the Los Angeles office. Peter and his lovely wife had me over for dinner several times. Jim Morrison was West Coast sales manager. Jim had a colorful history. Ray Walker was head of technical services. Ray would become sales manager when Jim Morrison moved to a different company. The office secretary was Neil DeSmith, who was from Argentina, and Neilda's niece, Lydia. The technicians in LA were Larry McGlore from Chicago, Leonard Budenhagen from Nebraska, and Jack Wismer, a native Californian, I think. Also helping in the warehouse was Donnie Walker and Ray's son, whose name I can't recall. 
I was transferred to the LA office in 1973. On Jim Morrison's last day at Ferense, Nilda and Lydia put on a going away party for him. It was a fun goodbye. In 1972, Ferense introduced the world's first handheld broadcast caller camera, the KCR-40. Norelco had launched the PCP-90 and was enjoying success with such companies as Compact Video, who was revolutionizing the way outdoor videotaping was possible. Simply stated, the KCR-40 was a reconfiguration of a standard camera head. The optics and tubes were in the handheld part, and the necessary electronics were carried as a backpack. The head and backpack could be separated up to 50 feet, which made the head truly as light and portable as any film camera. Several Hollywood studios acquired the KCR-40 and promoted it as electronic cinematography. One such company was Video Mobile, essentially a film production unit using a video camera instead of film. List price for the KCR-40 was $95,000. If that sounds expensive, the list price of a Ferencay standards converter was $500,000. One standards converter was actually sold to Cartridge Television in Redwood City, California. It was the size of three refrigerators. The East Coast office of Ferenczi was in Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Sales manager was Tony Pignoni. Tony would soon be national manager when Rupert Goodspeed leaves the company to take a position at Tritronics. Technical services were provided by John Webb with the help of George Howard. Jack Leonard was administrative manager and Shirley was the secretary. The biggest event of each year was the NAB show. Each year, the National Association of Broadcasters would meet in either Chicago or Washington, D.C. In the exhibition halls, the latest in television technology from all over the world was put on display in the hopes of selling equipment to TV networks and TV stations. In 1972, Ferencay had a large booth in Chicago. In 1973, the show was in Washington, D.C., and Ferencay had an even larger area to promote the new and exciting line of color cameras. Bill Montgomery, who was from Mississippi, worked for the Ferencay Home Office in Darmstadt, Germany. Bill was in the States to assist in the installation of all the Ferencay equipment that was needed for the show. In all, over a dozen working cameras were installed. The technical crew worked long hours getting everything up and running. Finally, the show opened. Jack Carey, Chicago personality emceed a 10-minute presentation showing the revolutionary quality of the Ferencay cameras. The KCR-40 handheld was a big hit. Indeed, Ferencay was the star of the NAB show. All the ancillary equipment manufacturers, the companies that made the lenses, the monitors, the tripods and such, they all wanted a working Ferencay camera in their booth using their own special accessory. Ferencay had cameras with a German Schneider lens, a French ingenue lens, and the Japanese Canon lens. Schneider introduced the first ever 30 to 1 zoom lens that year. Ingenue was hoping to attach their lens to the somewhat smaller KCP camera. The Ferencay presentation used three live cameras in the show, the full-size KCU-40, the handheld KCR-40, and the KCP-40 color camera. The cameras were operated by students from American University. Bill Montgomery was very helpful with instructing the co-eds on how to operate the cameras. The KCP-40 was a smaller version of the KCU-40. It 
was very popular with the educational television community. The Goodyear Blimp used the Ferenczi KCP in its coverage of events around the country. One day in 1974, Goodyear invited the Ferenczi LA office to take a ride in the Blimp. We floated over Orange County for about an hour. I got to sit in the captain's seat and actually turn the Blimp using foot pedals and a steering wheel. I left Ferencze in 1975, the same year Ferencze introduced the Type B 1-inch videotape recorder. The KCR-40 was soon replaced by the battery-powered KCN-40. Ferencze eventually gave up on the American market. Competition from Japan made everything else obsolete. The quality and compactness of Ikigami made even RCA exit the camera manufacturing realm by the end of the 1970s. I visited Rupert and Betsy Goodspeed at their home in Ojai, California in 2000. Rupert showed me his new car, the first electric car I had ever seen. We drove into town and had a nice meal with their daughter Heidi. Sadly, Rupert passed away in 2006 at age 80. Today, in 2012, I look back on my years at Ferencze with great fondness. Ferencze was the foundation on which I built a career providing technical services to the motion picture industry. A point of pride is the letter of commendation I received in 1974 from the Hollywood chapter of the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers on my contribution to electronic photography today. As a farm boy from Flat Rock, Indiana, I am grateful for the privilege to have participated in a small way in the history of television technology.